On the streets of Xinjiang, there is still a tension and signs of what this place has been through. So I was watching a Sky News article the other day, and this is a real journalist in an area of China called Xinjiang, which is in the northwest, where basically where all the Uyghurs are and all the controversy related to certain things with the education camps there. And you can sort of believe this person more because she's actually there showing you the facts. It's actually quite funny because near enough on other channels that they were showing this is absolute rubbish and there's two people talking about it. I even sent them a link, but they both deleted the link to it. Um, one is called Fumbe or something like that and Jerry's Take on Tiny is another one. These are just paid CCP shills. Another one who um, is a guy called Andy Borum. Uh, what happened to the that you guys gave on that up on that one? Uh, this is Andy Borum on Twitter. He's a little bit of a idiot. Well, hey, if they can call me idiots, I can call them idiots. Eye for an eye, tooth for a tooth, and never the twain shall meet. Let's continue a little bit with this Sky News article. It's actually really good, and it depicts the truth because you can see the truth. Heavy police, regular stops, a sense they're always watching. It is now infamous for its brutal oppression of the Muslim Uyghur minority. So basically in this article, it says, where are the Uyghur uh, educational camps? We are, where are these concentration camps now? And she does go into one city center. I think it could be Urumqi. I don't know, don't quote me on that. And she showed you some pictures and some videos of a old, re-education camp which is not there anymore maybe because of the pressure related to the um, people the other government saying this is wrong this is um, uh, against uh, anti say human rights for example this person this next person here his brother this is the actual you would say not the proof but the evidence from survivors or family of survivors his brother has been in prison for 20 years why for reading the wrong book i repeat reading the wrong book imagine your government actually saying you can't read harry potter it's as simple as that yeah in opinion and they say people have freedom in china well some do it's more on privilege than anything else in 2017, arrests and prosecutions were like this. You can see that it was high in this area, the northwest of China, as big as Turkey. But they went down. But these prisoners in 2017 are like have life sentences, 20, 25 years for minor crimes, for not drinking, for not eating pork, for what else? The list goes on and on. So this reporter decided to go and find where these concentration or re-educational camps are. But before we get to that, some of the educational camps in that certain city have been turned into schools. Is that a good thing? Well, schooling, yep, yeah, it's meant to be good. But she went into the countryside only, be, only to be met with a barbed wire fence saying, you can't go here. So. Xinjiang, what are you trying to hide? Why can't the journalists go there? Yeah. If I went there myself, would I be able to go without a video camera? I doubt it very much. So hiding something is not going to solve the problem. Not talking about it is not going to solve the problem. The problem is always going to be there. I know in China, you would say the old news is no news is old news is old news basically so you can even go to the satellite photos that you can see here related to it and you can see the difference of what it was like before what it's like now etc etc it's a really good article and hopefully if i remember i'll put a link in the description below that's all i got to say about this just a little bit of a rant and rave, just an update of the Xinjiang problem. It hasn't gone away. It's, um, it's just what the government has done is moved it from one place, put it into another place, out of sight, out of sight, out of mind. 
If you go to Urumqi or Kashgar, the big areas of Xinjiang, you possibly have an amazing time. There's great food, there's people dancing, there are people happy there. But this is behind the scenes. This is what people don't want to talk about or they're just innocent too. If they do talk about it and the ch local Chinese government pick up on this, then their life basically could be over. My name is James. This is the James N. Cooper Show. Have a great day wherever you are. Bye-bye for now. Thank you.